In this video, I'm going to show you some examples of author websites, and we'll talk kind of about what you're going to need and the difference between a professional best-selling author website and an indie self-publishing author website, because there's they're focused on different things. They've got to function different ways. And I'll kind of go through the scale. So this one, this is a Dan, Brand, Dan Brown site. It's very graphic heavy. It's very well designed. It looks really good. And so you start out and you've got um, the novels, news. So this might be kind of a blog page, um, possibly. It looks like sort of a blog page or some updates. You've got social media to follow, secrets. Here's the book covers. So this is a nicely designed site. There's a few problems with total graphic sites like this. Um, the first one is they're very expensive and they take a long time to make. So you would have to have a professional designer and it would cost a lot of money and it's tricky to pull off well. So you may spend like $10,000 and get a really nice site, but if you only spend $2,000, you might get a site that's sort of like this, but it just doesn't work. It doesn't pull it off well enough. The design isn't good enough. So you might have a big graphic site that's all pictures, but for some reason it just doesn't really fit together well. It's not easy to use. It's not cohesive. So even though these are very good sites, they're hard to pull off well without a lot of money or a really good designer. So it's riskier to try to make a site based on this kind of Dan Brown template than it would be to use something much simpler like I'm going to show you later. The other big problem with these kind of sites, there's so much, there's so many pictures and images that it's going to load really slowly. And if you're Dan Brown or a best-selling author, people will wait for your site to load. It doesn't really matter if it takes, you know, five or 10 seconds. But if people don't know who you are specifically, maybe they're finding your site on accident or they're looking for something else. They're not going to wait five or 10 seconds for your site to load. They're just going to leave. So you, more than like Dan Brown, he doesn't need to worry about those kind of things. But if you're a self-publishing author, you need people to find your site and to stay on your site long enough to find out about your books and who you are. And so you're going to want to have something that loads fast, is much sleeker, more minimal, um, focusing more on the content. This is another site of Cassandra Clare. It's also pretty well designed. Um, her covers are great. Although I don't think these are the, this is a different series of covers than the ones I'm used to, the more famous ones. This is pretty simple, her blog posts, um, but it's, it's nicely designed. There's the website designer down here. But again, because this has so many pictures, it's going to load slowly. It's nice that she has writing advice on this blog. If you're an author, you need to be writing something that people find. So her readers of her books will find her site anyway, but if she wants to, because the purpose of your website, it can't just be for your readers. If you already have fans, you don't really need a website because they've already read your books. You want your website to sell books. It means you need people who haven't read your books yet to find your website and find out about your books. So you always want to be thinking, how can I write something that appeals to people who could become fans of my work, but they aren't fans of it yet? And so she has writing advice, so she can probably get some extra traffic from other people who want to be writers, but who, who don't have uh, a successful publishing platform yet. She has frequently asked questions, tour dates. Then she's got... Um, a menu over here. It's a little bit hard to read, but it's okay. Bio, writing, excerpts, blog. So she has a blog page that just links to her Tumblr. So she uses Tumblr for her blog. And that's kind of funny because this Tumblr page doesn't really match her branding very well. But that's okay. Here's another one, Mark Dawson. Uh, Mark Dawson's been in the news a lot recently because he's making a lot of money selling books on Kindle. And part of what he does, he's really focused on Facebook advertising. So he, he uses Facebook advertising to, to target people who might like his books and gets them back to this website so that they can sign up on his email list so that he can sell them more books later. So he has a funnel worked out that's very profitable. 
And for that reason, although he has a blog and some other pages, he's got this really big call to action on the top. So as soon as you find his site, you're going to see that big call to action. This is his blog, which is kind of more of a standard blog, new information. Um, but his homepage has this really big slider. And you can get that with um, a simpler website, too. You can put a big slider on top with a big button. And I'll show you how to do that later. He's also got a bunch of books in this series, several different series. And he's really just got, I mean, on this homepage, it's a big call to action, and then a book, and buy now buttons, and a very short description. And that's really it. And so for him, he's probably focused more on driving traffic with Facebook ads or um, getting people to come to his site after signing up. Or once they finish a book, they'll come back to the site with, for the free offer, and they'll sign up for something new. Here's another example of Kerry Schaefer. Um, this is actually one of the book covers that I did last year. And this is more of what I would recommend as a WordPress theme. And the way that I like to have them set up is you have your, your blogs with your new posts kind of right at the beginning. And on your sidebar, you have a books, read a preview, buy the book. This is kind of the news. A big author photo with an author bio and some contact links. I don't like having 10 different social media profiles. I think you can, Facebook and Twitter are really the ones you need to be using. The others are sort of extra unless you really are focused on building up a profile at Goodreads or a specific site. Um, but you don't want a lot of options. You want two or three options where they can choose to get in touch with you. And then she's got a call to action, download a free copy of the novella, sign up for your email. There's some study that shows instead of having this field box and the join now, if you just have a button, like on this site, he doesn't have the field or the form. He just has a big button. And um, a lot of self-publishing authors, Simon Whistler of, of self-publishing, uh, the Rocking Self-Publishing podcast, and Nick Stevenson, who's written a lot of books about building a, an email list for authors. They say that if you have a button that people have to click first, so you click to get the free books, then people will be much more likely to actually fill out the form and click this final button. Whereas you won't get as much traction if you just have the form and join now. And so here's another one that I set up just as an example. This is authoridentity.com. It's where I'm gonna put these videos and it's basically just a template it's not very fancy, it's very simple. There's reasons that I like it this way. Mainly, if you're focusing on writing articles that get natural traffic that you can convert into fans, this is the kind of author website that I would set up. Um, it's very minimal, it's sleek, but it's also nice looking. There, there's a danger with websites where the more you try to customize it or tweak it or add a lot of design, you, it's easier to screw it up and make something really ugly. So if you choose a really clean, minimal WordPress theme, you can hire someone to make you a nice logo. You can put a couple pictures on it, and at least it's going to be clean and professional and not look terrible. And so I think if you're doing it yourself, or even if you're hiring a designer to help you, there's a danger in trying to do too much and ending up with something ugly or something that loads really slowly. And so. Well, I can't say a simple, minimal site like this is the absolute best for authors. I do think at least it's safe. It's a safe option to make something simple and clean and fast that works and doesn't scare people away and looks professional and is cheap because you can install a theme. You know, the, the, this theme costs, I don't know, $40. So with a nice theme, maybe you can pay 50 bucks for a logo and for under $100, you can have a really professionally looking uh, author website that loads really quickly and gets people to do what you want. So I have an about me where I have a description of the bio. This isn't a real website. This is just a, I've put in kind of some fake text because this is just kind of an example for authors for how I think they could build their own author websites. But a link to sign up to your list 
some social media profiles. I say here, you can join with a form like this, or you can put a big button like this, um, which links to a sign up. I don't know if I've actually set this up yet for, I guess I have. So this goes to my creativity list. Um, so this is more of a minimal theme. This is kind of the type of theme that I'll be using in the examples that I set up. I'm going to make one simple author WordPress, and I'm also going to make more of a basic static landing page for email signups. The other reason I like this kind of um, author website is I think author websites, I think there's a danger in trying to be too professional. If you look at kind of Dan Brown's it looks great, it's amazing, it looks really professional. However, it also probably makes him a little bit more um, aloof or formal. So you don't quite get that same personality. I think if you're a self-publishing or indie author, it's going to be really important to connect with your fans on a really personal basis. And for that to happen, you've got to put a lot of personality in your site not through the design, because like I said, it's easy to screw up the design, but you need to add a lot of personality with your writing. So I think having a really simple, minimal author site like this, with a picture, with some static pages, I have a press kit, books, reviews, contact, um, and then a blog. I guess I didn't even put a blog. I should have a blog link. I'll add that later. But I just have my blog showing up here. I think a, a site like this where you have an Instagram feed, where you have a link to your Twitter or Facebook, um, it can make you seem more approachable and people can kind of get to know you as a person rather than seeing you as like just a really glossy professional author. Um, and I think it's helpful if you can get, because the danger is you can get fans that like your books and that's great, but what you need if you're an indie author is you need friends. You need people who really like you and get you and who are promoting your books, not just because they like your books, but because they like you as a person. And so I think having this kind of website that's simple and more transparent, not only because it looks good and it's, it loads quickly and you can't screw it up by adding a lot of junk, um, I also think it helps to kind of showcase you as a person. And I also like to say that the best looking thing on your author website should be your book covers. And I'll come back to this later. I don't think I even put any books on this site yet. Um, I might have put a couple, I'm not sure. So I have these buy buttons. I made a couple um, nice 3D images like this. This is one of the book covers I made. I think if you have a simple, clean author website, then your books can really stand out. Here's another one I made with my book and then just a nice background. If you do really nice, high quality art like this, it'll make your books look really professional and it'll draw the attraction to your books. What I hate to see is a really nicely designed author website with mediocre or ugly book covers that look terrible and don't match the, the branding of the website. Because the other thing is, even if you get a really nice professional brand like a, if you choose a theme that you like for WordPress and you use it, maybe the theme doesn't match the style of the book covers at all. So you get this weird clashing between your book covers and the website. And you don't want the website to look okay and your book covers to look bad in comparison because your books are the product. Your book covers has to, has to look better than everything else. So you want the website to kind of get out of the way and make your books look really good. And you need professional book cover design and graphics but you also need a clean, a clean blog that doesn't, um, that isn't too confusing or hard to use or distracting, or has too many moving parts. That's also why I like to keep, I like to keep a really simple, running blog on the left side and then a really nice sidebar on the right side and a top menu. That's just kind of. There's other ways to do it, but. A lot of websites look like this, and especially a lot of um, powerful blogs, like the, the blogs that sell the most books, because 
we've learned now that book reviews in newspapers or big websites, they don't work as well. The blogs that really sell books are personality blogs around one person, usually like one blogger who has gotten really famous because people like his writing, they know his personality. You want your author website to be kind of like that. It shouldn't just be a showcase for your books. It should almost be like a personality cult where it really showcases you as a person, but you want to do that with a few nice graphics and really clean design and nice font. You don't want to do that with a whole bunch of garbage um, or a whole bunch of pictures that you collected from a whole bunch of places because you'll get this really crowded and confusing site design and that's not going to work for what you want them to do. So in the next uh, video, we're going to just talk more about how I can start setting up a site like this.